Hey y'all, before I get on with today's video, I just want to say I'm now accepting subscriber craft submissions. You want me to review your craft, tell you what's wrong with it, what's good about it, what you could do to make it better, whatever. If you send me a craft and I like it and I think it's worth talking about, I'm going to give you a full analysis and make an entire video on your craft and your craft alone. So, if you're interested in that, please join my Discord. There's a server, or a channel rather, specifically for that. Hop in there, send me a blueprint, tell me what it's about, tell me what's interesting or what's not interesting. I really want some bad stuff. Like, send me your bad ships, or your bad planes, or your bad whatever. I want to see them, because I want to talk about them, and I want to help you make them better. Alright, let's get on with this video. Hey y'all, I'm Brenzo, and today... Well, you may have noticed today's video is titled a little differently. It's probably titled something like Intermission or Episode 4.5. Well, that's because I've created a lot of stuff for this ship, but I haven't put anything in the ship. And in order to test this ship, we need to, well, know what our material costs are going to be so we can fit a budget. We need to know, does it flow properly or not? How heavy is it? How balanced is the hull? So today I'm kind of going to just bring you through with me as I go through and I add the armor and I add the guns and I sort of get everything to fit correctly. Step one, we got to grab our Citadel armor. I've been done with this armor for too long for it to not be on this boat. So easy way to do this, just grab it with the prefab, it's just 11 thick, yep. And it's time to excavate this ship. So. In the Citadel, we have a lot of wonky stuff. So let's define where it is, first things first. I'll set a mirror. And I want the Citadel to be everywhere from here outwards. Right? Because this is all... Yes, okay. So that's kind of where Rob has had it, so that's where I'm going to have it. This is arbitrary. I'm just picking it because it's what looks correct. Alright. Oop, didn't mean to do that. So, now, installing armor into a ship is pretty simple. Just make sure your armor is lined up correctly. I'm pretty sure that's right. What I'm going to do is simply copy paste everything in here. Oop, okay, well, I'll do some more clearing out, then I'll come back and start copy pasting. Alright, that took a few seconds. So, here it is, our fully hollowed out citadel. You might notice that this section of armor isn't off yet, and that's because this armor kind of interferes with the superstructure. So I'm going to probably do this last once I clear out the superstructure and redo it, simply because I want to keep the measurements like almost exactly correct on this ship. So if I want the superstructure to begin and end the same places, I'm going to need it to, well, be at the exact same place. So, I'm going to do that later. And installing armor is, once again, this simple. Make sure your armor is lined up. Okay, and boom. Yes, I'm using keyboard building today. If anyone is happier because of that, I know I'm usually a mouse peasant, but get over it. It's just what I do. But I suppose this makes you happy, so I'm a keyboard building. And then, instead of doing that over again, I'm so smart. Man, I'm so smart. I thought of the most basic thing possible. Okay, let's make sure that's aligned correctly. Sure is. Copy. And paste. And there it is. We now have a crap ton of armor installed. So now this is it this is our citadel as we want it obviously some things are still liable to change like uh, I will be taking the armor up a little higher but now we have all this space to play with and all this armor so let's kind of see what that did to the buoyancy of the ship not much has changed as I expected material cost still pretty good honestly we were at about I want to say we're about... Actually, I can just look at it. We're at 320 before we install this, and we're at 380, which is pretty good. So, 
Next, I need to finagle with the guns because I'll, I'll just show you. So these guns are done. Where's the, the Ragnarok? Uh, let's grab the safe gun. But, as you can see, these guns aren't going to fit correctly. Besides the fact the barrels aren't in their right place. You can kind of see that... Ooh, this is the old version. I'll have to go grab a new version. But these guns are going to need some tweaking, so... I'm going to go grab the new version, and I'm going to tweak it, and I'm going to get this gun to fit. So, BRB. Alright, I've gone ahead and just done the guns. Plain and simple. Before we get going... The more observant of you might go, wait a minute, Brenzo. Weren't those guns bull pupped originally with the barrels in the back? And to you I say, why? Yes. Yes, they were. Are they currently like that? Nope. Are they going to become like that again in the future? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, it's just easier for me to fit these guns in the superstructure for testing purposes right now if they're not bullpup the barrel is just in the center like this so that's why it's like that and that's why it's gonna stay like that let's talk about material cost and let's talk about budget budget's pretty important we want to kill the megalodon right so that means we have to cost similar to the megalodon but we can cost over the megalodon that's okay I'm imagining this thing costing about two million. That's my honest guess. I think if the Ragnarok costs two million, it's reasonable, it's pricey, but it needs to be pricey because it's a, it's a big, huge battleship. Of course it's gonna be pricey. So if you're interested in potentially in the future fighting against this thing and you wanna fight in its weight class, aim for two million because that's what I'm aiming for. And I'll have some more information about fighting this thing in the future for y'all. But yeah, there we go. We're at 1 million right now. We're 1.1. So we got a lot to play with. Um, most of our next materials is going to go into armoring on the turrets themselves, as well as armoring the uh, hull around the turrets. That'll be next. And then we have to, of course, do... AI. I couldn't think of the word for it. We have to armor the AI and get it sunk in there. And then do engines. So all that's going to be pretty expensive. This thing's going to end up costing a fair chunk. So basically, my next goal, which this will probably be what the next video or couple videos is about, is I need to look for things that are cost efficient. As well as volume efficient, because I want to have a lot of like systems on this ship. So this is why this video is more of a discussion video, more of a just me spitting ideas at you, because like, here it is. Here's all I have for, for now. Um, so I need to work on things that are cost effective. The biggest concern is engines, because we already need, assuming we go with this Azipod style, we already need 8,000 per Azipod, and there's four of them, so... 8 times 4 is what, uh, 32,000, I want to say? Yeah, it's 32,000. So we already need 32,000 power just to move. You know, God forbid we add any, like, thrusts upwards or left or right, then we're going to need even more power. And we're going to need shields. We're going to need full shield coverage on this thing. Robaz did it, so I have to do it. That's going to be pretty costly. I don't know how much it's going to cost to fully shield this thing. But I'm guessing we're going to need a, a lot of power. And we need enough to power this railgun, which is how much? How much, how much, how much, how much? You are 10,000 per, so 40,000. So already, we know we need somewhere in the range of 70,000 power generated, whether it's energy or power minimum. So engines and efficiency for cost is going to be probably the next biggest thing. I think that's going to need a, almost a whole video devoted to it, of just engines. So yeah, uh, that's it for this portion. Uh, I think I want to test some turret armor, so we'll cut to that. Like, I've also noticed as I'm going through and uh, just adding all the, the 
bullets to this ahead of time. Not all, uh, or rather, none of these have local weapon controllers. Why is that? Well, that's simply because I haven't done it yet, and that I probably want to keep the local weapon controllers and how to EMP insulate them. I want to do that all in the, the dedicated EMP episode. So that's why right now there's no local weapon controllers and there's nothing there to facilitate their existence. Simply because I'm saving it for another time. In case you noticed that and you were wondering. So, bonus section, let's talk turret armor. So, I've already gone and tested it just for uh, this gun. I'm probably going to have to stand make the other guns standardized um, with the space they have so they also fit the same uh, armor dimensions. But this gun has about 4 meters up front, 3 meters on side, and about 1 or 2 meters on back worth of armor space. If you remember right, that's because I back set the turret so the, the front would have a little more armor than the back. Alright, so... What's an optimal way to, to armor this turret? Well, since this is something that's super stupid crazy important, using heavy armor is okay here. Typically, in ships, you want to avoid heavy armor where possible. Like, you don't want to make your hull entirely out of heavy armor if you don't have, like, 10 blocks of alloy like I do. But, um, <clears throat> you kind of just want to avoid heavy armor where possible when building your main armor. When it comes to turret armor, we are trying to protect this thing like it means everything to us. This is the most important part of my ship. So how should we armor it? Well, I see about three ways that all could work. And I'll just list these out. Um, I'll probably give these a test. And I'll just have to switch us to a testing environment. But I'll just spill them out here in words. So I could go with a solid layout like this, although it probably wouldn't be pure heavy armor. It'd probably have some metal just to save costs and weight, because I can't have the ship sink, because <laughs> it's <laughs> it's gonna have enough heavy armor everywhere else. Another option is something kind of like if I could find it, something with slopes would work, like kind of a double slope design or a single sl slope. Oh, my bad turn off symmetry or like a single slope design or get a little cheesy with it and we could where is that block where is that block we could use era everyone's favorite nope don't replace all of the it with era so we could do some sort of era layout where we have like a layer of era this is just to stop things that are like going to annihilate the turret like a big old APHE round but there's not really much we can do against our main two enemies here. Our main two enemies are huge, crazy powerful Sabos that are going to go straight through the ship. And the same thing, but for packs. Big old piercing packs. That's what worries us, because those kinds of things could easily Oko the turret and take it out in one shot. So there's kind of really no way to, <laughs> to get past those without health spamming. So technically the best layout is just pure 4 meters of heavy armor, but I don't think that's worth it. Um, here's my opinions. I don't think the ear is worth it simply because we have enough armoring around the rest of our ship that... Anything that's going to kill us that we can stop with era, if it's getting to the turret, it's already gotten to us. It's game over. You know, if a big old APHE rail shell is coming at us and it makes it to the turret, there's nothing stopping it. One layer of era is only going to stop it once. If it's some stupid, like, huge uh, heat shell, well, hopefully we have air gaps in the turret and those kind of save us. So those are all kind of our options. I think I'm going to use as little heavy armor as possible. I'll probably use some mixture of a heavy armor outer shell with metal innards. But yeah, let's just go to a testing environment and see what works best. 
So this will be a little shorter than my uh, previous armor testing because I'm not actually going to test. You see my process, you know how to do it. So these are my turret armor ideas. And uh, I've once again, I've run through the gauntlet of shells. I've excluded HP or hollow point simply because uh, hollow point never really gave me meaningful data in the last uh, experiments. So this time I'm just skipping it and going for the rounds that are pretty deadly to turrets like... Uh, Gigafrag, APHE, and uh, what else? Heat was what I included. So same as everything else, just no HP. So I went through a series of iterations. I started with metal, and I realized, well, metal doesn't really <laughs> resist too well. It resists okay, but it's not the best. And since these turrets are going to be in a position where they're not getting the most expensive, effective armor in the whole possible... They need to have very thick armor on their own so that they can survive. So that that's why I'm willing to use heavy because these will probably be surrounded by some form of health max armor instead of the uh, the like nine meters of alloy that I did previously. So anyway, went through this. I tried era. I tried poles. I tried everything. I even tried uh, one meter. Uh, what are these wedges? One meter wedges, which worked okay, but I can kind of foresee this being an issue if you get hit by. Uh, Anything that just blows all your wedges sky high. Anyway, so I was talking to uh, Setup in the one of the discords. Thank you, Setup. You're a godsend for bouncing ideas with me. And I kind of came to this. One meter of heavy armor? But Brenzo, why is it only one meter? Don't you want two meters for armor stacking? Well, I'm assuming I'm going to get hit by heat in the turrets. And if I have if only have four meters available and I have the armor stacked on the outside of the turret, the heat is just going to pass through that armor. So the armor stacked heavy will never be useful against the heat because it's just going to go right through. So that's why I have one meter on the outside. One meter, a pole, because poles give you kinetic reduction from almost any direction except this tiny, tiny pixel right here that runs straight down the block, which they don't give you any resistance at all, but from every other angle, they give you resistance. So, they're good, and they're more, uh, they have more health than, and what is it? Is it beam slopes? They have more health than beam slopes, which is good, and, uh, yeah. That's about it for pulse. And then just double stacked heavy. I think this will work. It's pretty effective. Its stats is uh, 5 frags, 8 heats, uh, 11 gunpowder APHE, and 4 rail APHEs. That's how many it took. Compare that to the other version, which is what this is what setup gave me. Which took 1 less frag, 5 less heat, because the heavy armor is stacked here, so it just passes through and goes to the back. So that's why if you're armoring against heat, I think you have to armor more thick on the interior of the armor rather than the exterior. I know it goes against what you might think. Then, about equivalent in the APHE department. So this is only just slightly more efficient, and most of it's probably because I'm using a pole, which is more expensive and heavier than a square corner. But yeah, about the same. And of course, the the same is true. Here's the direct comparison. The pole took two more frags, took one less heat, but that's probably just because of heat variability in the fragment spawning. And took the same, but only but one more railgun show. So, I'm going to go coat my ar my armor. <laughs> I'm going to go coat my turrets in this, and I'll bring you right back to it. Oh, also random thought. To talk about my uh my bullpup issue yesterday, I figured it out. I know how I'm going to do it. I, if you're in the chat and you know how I should have done it, and you, you're probably thinking the same thing as me. So, no need. I got it. I'll figure it out, but yeah, I, I know how to get the barrels inset into the turret cap. I, I I'll just do it once I make the turret cap. So here we go. I've kind of implemented it on the first turret, and you can just assume the rest of the turrets will look like this. Uh, once I'm done implementing it, I'll bring up the material cost and show you if it still floats or not, because <laughs> those are both really important. But anyway, so you can see here. That I'm going for the philosophy of turrets are front siders. They only need really stupid thick armor on the front. 
you don't need it anywhere else. Because as long as this turret is pointing at the enemy, which it should be, they're only ever going to see that side of the armor. You know, there might be a branch case where the Ragnarok can't aim and it turns the turret around, but, you know, if they're seeing our rear, then there's so much armor, like just this way, that it's so unlikely to hit that turret. Unless we get hit by something ridiculous like a pierce pack, which in case we're screwed no matter what. So, that's why I'm doing it. I'm also trying to save material costs because heavy armor is really expensive. And I don't want to run out of money on this ship. So, yeah. We gotta use metal in the back. But pretty simple. Oh, I kind of forgot some stuff that I'll fix while I'm talking. But, yeah. Turrets are frontsiders. Treat them like frontsiders. You don't need to spend a crap ton of money just armoring your turret. You're not going to get much out of it. It's not really going to help you in the end. You're just going to end up spending more materials, which is like, I mean, I guess if you want to, but I've kind of said my budget is 2.1. I don't know if I'll hit 2.1, but I'd like to. So I'm going to try my damnness to get there. So that means I have to skimp on armor where I'm allowed to. And well, I'm allowed to not armor this. So yeah, I'll go and I'll I'll armor the rest of the shirts and I'll come back to you with the material cost. I said I'd be back and here I am. The Ragnarok is real chugga chugga choo choo in my PC, as some may say. I'm some. Because I have I've had to do a bunch of surgery on this thing. Thank you, Robert. Very cool. But this thing has just had so many weird design choices and inconsistencies that I've just had to slice and dice all over the ship just to get it consistent. So uh, I can't put in the water right now because my PC will chug. Anyway, turrets all have armor. You can see I I've had to slice the superstructure. This means I'm going to have to completely resize it and adjust it to fit these new turrets, but hey, it works for now. They're all seated correctly. They're all armored. They have the exact same armor schema, so everything's one for one. And they all sit comfortably and they all rotate to this piece of the superstructure, which is naturally going to block them anyway. I'm not going to have them turn 180 because that would be kind of dangerous. And I want it to look like the Ragnarok anyway. Whatever. Material costs. What you been waiting for? Um, pretty good right now. We're So we're still missing... Um, we're still missing armor outside of the citadel and on the top layer of the citadel, like right here. And we're missing armor all through here. So that's probably going to bump us up. I, I'd say maybe another 150, 250, something like that. I'm going to do the exact math later because I can't add all that armor in until I, I have to lift the superstructure out of the deck by like two or three meters. <laughs> so I'm going to have to figure out how to do that first before I can even install that armor. And then I imagine we'll have somewhere in the range of 1.3 million. And then we get to play with engines and defense systems, which is going to be crazy and take a, a long time. But we have the space for everything we need. So next video, what's next video going to be? Well, it's going to be engines. I'm going to go through every single engine type we could possibly do, tell you all about them, and we'll do some testing. That video will have more of my usual in-depth experimentation that some people may have come uh, or become used to. This one's just kind of a progress update. The ship is coming along. It is slowly becoming something workable. It just, ugh. The actual ship itself is very, very gross when you slice it apart and see what's in there. So, slowly but surely fixing it. I'll see you all in the next ones about engines. Oh, and post script make sure i don't even write a script make sure you join my discord and send in your uh, your craft submissions that you'd like me to review because in the future i will be making videos about those so join in link in description like and subscribe usual stuff see y'all